Welcome to the Recaps channel. In today's video, we'll recap the menu. Let's get started. Tyler and Margot are waiting at the local harbor for a boat that will take them to a private island. They are excited to dine at Hawthorne, an exclusive restaurant operated by the country's best chef. Tyler is a food enthusiast who admires the chef and enjoys fine dining. To their surprise, they see several important people boarding the boat with them. Among them are a food critic named Lillian, her editor Ted, actor George with his girlfriend Felicity, and a group of tech investors named Dave, Soren, and Bryce. However, Margot is particularly concerned about businessman Richard and his wife Anne, as Margot knows Richard and wants to avoid being seen by him. During the boat trip, the first fancy dish is served, and Tyler is impressed and takes a picture, but Margot remains unimpressed. Upon arriving at the island, the maitre d' Elsa mistakenly calls Margot by a different name, forcing Tyler to explain that there was a change in plans and he came with a different date. This creates an awkward situation. Before dining, the guests are given a tour of the facilities by Elsa, who explains that the restaurant's employees handle all the hunting and farming on the island. The chef also resides there, although his house is off-limits. Once inside the restaurant, they discover that the kitchen is open, allowing them to observe the cooks at work. One of the tables is occupied by an elderly lady named Linda who appears out of place. When Richard finally notices Margot's presence, he asks his wife to switch seats with him for a better view. Elsa informs everyone that they can watch the cooks but photography is not allowed. However, Tyler continues to take pictures, distracting the cooks, who ask him to stop. At that moment, Chef Slowick arrives, and Elsa says something to him that catches his attention. The first dish, a complimentary appetizer, is served. Lillian takes her time to savor the food, while Felicity is preoccupied with breaking up with George. Margot finds the dish enjoyable but not particularly impressive, prompting Tyler to arrogantly explain its significance. For the next course, Slowick gathers the cook's attention and delivers a speech about his work, emphasizing the importance of savoring and relishing the food. Tyler tries to make a comment but is scolded by Slowick for interrupting. Tyler continues taking pictures despite the prohibition. The second course arrives, and Slowick explains that bread is considered the food of the common man, so the guests will not be served any. Instead, they receive a breadless plate with small drops of savory accompaniments. Tyler loves it, but Margot finds it insulting. The tech investors, growing uncomfortable with the joke, request bread but are denied, even when they mention their association with the island's owner, Doug Verwick. Elsa cryptically tells them they will eat less than desired and more than deserved, effectively silencing their complaints. Margot refuses to eat her dish, and when Tyler tries to take it for himself, he accidentally breaks a glass. Slowick quickly approaches the table, but instead of addressing the broken glass, he focuses on Margot's refusal to eat. Margot looks towards Richard, and then notices this, remarking that Margot resembles their deceased daughter. Richard pretends not to know Margot and changes the subject. Slowick signals the start of the third course, called, Memory, and shares a personal story about his family's taco nights. He reveals that Linda is his mother, who has struggled with alcoholism since he was a child. Slowick's father was also an alcoholic, and one night, in defense of his mother, Slowick stabbed his father in the thigh with a pair of scissors. Slowick expresses regret for not having killed his abusive father. The dish served to evoke this memory is a smoked chicken thigh with a pair of scissors on top, symbolizing the foam cord his father attempted to strangle his mother with. The tortillas, engraved with a laser machine, display disturbing memories. Everyone is disturbed by the story and shocked by the revelations on the tortillas. Lillian finds pictures of restaurants that close due to her negative reviews, and then discovers photographs depicting her husband's private life, including one with another woman. Richard claims it is a prank, but the tension rises. George comes across pictures of his role in a poorly received movie called, Dr. Sunshine, and the tech investors find evidence of fraudulent invoicing in their company's tax records. Elsa refuses to explain how this information was obtained, and when the men threaten to take action, she cryptically suggests it won't be necessary. Margot is offended by the images on her dish and wants to send it back, but Tyler insults her and criticizes her behavior. Upset, Margot decides to go to the bathroom and encounters Elsa, who tries to prevent her from entering a forbidden door. In the bathroom, Margot notices an employee carrying angel wings. Slowick confronts Margot about her refusal to eat and questions her identity, disbelieving her claim of being from Nebraska. The chefs begin preparing the fourth course, and Slowick introduces Jeremy, a talented sous-chef. 
However, Jeremy unexpectedly takes out a gun and ends his life in front of everyone. The guests are shocked, except for Tyler, who finds it fascinating. Slowick asks everyone to continue with the show, while confusion and fear spread among the guests. Margot is brought to the kitchen, where Slowick questions her allegiance. Margot returns to her table in tears and slaps Tyler when he continues discussing the food. The atmosphere in the restaurant grows tense and anxious. Soren attempts to break a window but fails, and the next course is served. Slowick responds to questions about the ingredients, revealing the flaws and issues of the guests. The tension escalates further as personal conflicts arise, including Slowick's ownership dispute with Doug, who is revealed hanging outside wearing angel wings. Doug is drowned, freeing Slowick, who retreats to his office. Margot confesses she is not meant to be there, and Slowick realizes she is also from the industry. They bond over their shared dissatisfaction with bad clients. After their conversation, Slowick takes all the guests outside. The next course is presented by Catherine, who explains the background behind her dish, Man's Folly. She reveals that Slowick's persistent advances towards her had resulted in a strained working relationship. As a response, she stabs Slowick and embraces him, causing his chef uniform to be stained with blood. Slowick, despite being wounded, apologizes for his behavior. The guests are left stunned and uncertain about what to do next. The atmosphere in the restaurant has become increasingly chaotic and unsettling, with fear and confusion spreading among the guests. Now, all the male guests are given a chance to escape, with a head start of 45 seconds, before the staff attempts to catch them. The men begin running, except for Tyler, who reluctantly joins them when Slowick insists. Inside the restaurant, Catherine takes charge of the women and they proceed to try the sixth course together. Catherine reveals that the idea of everyone dies was her own, and Lillian's compliments make her emotional, prompting the other ladies to offer their own compliments to keep her happy. During this time, and asks Margot if she knows her husband, and Margot confesses that she does. However, and does not respond to this revelation. Margot, feeling compelled, discloses her true name as Erin and admits she is from Massachusetts. Outside, Tyler watches the women through the window, frustrated that he is missing out on a course. Meanwhile, the staff pursues the fleeing men and effortlessly captures them, regardless of whether they hid in the forest or on the beach. Ted finds refuge in the smokehouse and is rewarded with a passard egg for his efforts. The men are then brought back to the restaurant. George sarcastically apologizes to Felicity for being a failure, prompting her to confess that she has been stealing money from him. George already knew about it, and Felicity knew that he was aware. Suddenly, Slowick announces that the menu cannot continue as planned until they resolve an unresolved matter. He confronts Tyler and forces him to confess that he had always known the theme of the evening would be, everyone dies. Tyler had originally planned a date but was dumped by his girlfriend, so he hired Margot without any concern for her well-being. Upset by this revelation, Margot attacks Tyler, but the staff quickly intervenes and separates them. Slowick then focuses on Tyler's knowledge of food and gifts him a chef's uniform, urging him to cook in front of everyone, even if Tyler doesn't want to. Tyler's cooking turns out to be disastrous, as Slowick mocks him for being an overly knowledgeable foodie. Slowick accuses Tyler of draining the mystery from his heart, whispering something in his ear that causes Tyler to remove the chef's jacket and run away in tears. Afterward, Slowick takes Margot aside and asks her for a favor. In order to prepare dessert, they need a large barrel that should have been in a corner, but Elsa forgot to bring it. Slowick insists that Margot retrieve it, ignoring Elsa's suggestion that the staff could handle it. As Margot heads out, she discovers that Tyler has taken his own life, but she remains indifferent. Slowick returns to the dining area, where George confronts him about the fairness of the situation. Slowick explains that George is being punished because he had seen Dr. Sunshine a few years ago, ruining Slowick's first day off in months. On the other hand, Felicity will die because she graduated from Brown University without any student debt. While Margot attempts to retrieve the barrel from the smokehouse, she mistakenly grabs a knife. She then sneaks into Slowick's house, a replica of the restaurant with a bed, and tries to escape through the forbidden silver door. However, she is intercepted by Elsa, who also wields a knife and expresses her fear of being replaced. A struggle ensues, and in an attempt to defend herself, Margot accidentally kills Elsa. Overwhelmed by panic at first, Margot seizes Elsa's keys and opens the silver door, revealing a simple room filled with Slowick's memories of a happier time when he had a family in a job making hamburgers. In the room, Margot finds a radio and attempts to use it to call for help. 
Back in the restaurant, Bryce is presented with a cake as a surprise for his birthday, organized by his friends. However, Margot interrupts the celebration by entering with the barrel through the main door. Slowick confesses that he used to be a monster, but now everything he does is genuine. His hands as a chef are so resilient that he can touch fire without feeling pain, shielding himself from further harm. Suddenly, a boat nears the island, and Slowick realizes that Margot used the radio to call for help. The staff swiftly cleans away all traces of blood from everyone, and Slowick issues a threat, if the guests seek assistance, an innocent man will meet his demise. Coast Guard Dale arrives at the restaurant and inquires about the problem, but nobody dares to speak up. However, Dale recognizes George and asks for an autograph, being a fan of Dr. Sunshine. George pretends to oblige and signs a piece of paper. Just as Dale is about to depart, he discovers that the note actually reads, help us, and draws his gun, ready to protect the now courageous guests who have found their voice. Dale points the gun at Slowick for a brief moment before unexpectedly turning and aiming at the candle on Margot's table. It is revealed that the gun is actually a lighter cleverly disguised as a firearm. Dale is not a Coast Guard officer but another member of Slowick's staff, and he can now return to the kitchen. Slowick is deeply disappointed in Margot for her betrayal and labels her as no better than the other guests. However, Margot recalls her earlier discovery in the house and decides to take a daring gamble. She claps to capture Slowick's attention and boldly declares her disdain for his food, expressing her desire to send it back. Slowick falls for Margot's manipulative tactics as she points out that all the dishes were merely intellectual exercises rather than something enjoyable. Still hungry, Margot craves a proper cheeseburger instead of the pretentious and deconstructed creations. For the first time in the day, Slowick breaks into a smile and agrees to prepare a traditional cheeseburger with fries priced at $9.95. The other cooks watch in fascination as Slowick joyfully prepares the classic dish, presenting it to Margot with pride. Margot takes a bite and enjoys the taste, but she realizes it's too much for her to finish and asks for the remainder to be packed to go. Slowick is still in a trance, so Margot follows his instructions. After putting the burger in her bag, she leaves a $10 bill on the table and exits the restaurant. Margot manages to reach the harbor and escape on the boat that Dale had left behind. Meanwhile, Slowick reminds the remaining guests that it's time to settle the bill. Under the no-tip system, the cost is $1,250 per person. Each guest receives a bag of goodies, which includes one of Doug's fingers. Everyone pays with their credit cards, and shortly after, Slowick announces that it's time for dessert. The cooks start decorating the floor as if it were a plate, adorning the guests with chocolate hats and marshmallow vests. Slowick declares that they represent the ruin of his life and they will now become a part of it. He introduces the dessert as the most offensive assault on the human palate. Typically prepared over a fire, Slowick grabs a lump of coal from the oven barehandedly, symbolizing a cleansing, and throws it onto the decorations left by the cooks. This ignites a fire that quickly engulfs the restaurant and everyone inside. Meanwhile, Margot halts the boat's progress to savor her cheeseburger while observing the restaurant burn. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share if you enjoyed the video. See you again here on the, the Recaps channel.